My name is Shi Ming Huang. Thank you for tuning in to my virtual talk today. I'm a senior air quality scientist and manager of well and fire and smoke at Sonoma Technology. My company is based in San Francisco Bay Area in California, but I am working remotely from the Triangle area in North Carolina. In this talk, you will hear about baseline and projected prescribed fire smoke exposures in California. I'm representing the project team listed here at Sonoma Technology. And this work is part of the public health impact of prescribed fire study or fire study for short. It is funded by California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection or CAL FIRE through their Forest Health Research Grant Program. There are many collaborators in this study taking the lead is Sumi Hoshiko at California Department of Public Health and other partners, including US EPA, Sequoia Foundation, Michigan Technological University, and US Forest Service. The Western US has a huge wildfire challenge, which is a culmination of climate change, a century of fire suppression, and the expansion of the wildland urban interface. We have experienced greater intensity and frequency of large wildfires in the last decade. Here's a scary fact. The eight largest wildfires in California history all happened in the last four years. They burned from 280,000 acres to over a million acres. Fuels treatment or the management of vegetation need to be scaled up significantly to make a, to make a systematic impact on reducing hazardous fuels buildup and mitigating wildfire risk. One of the most effective fuels treatment practices is to prescribe fires. Fires that are ignited intentionally in a controlled setting to achieve specific management objectives. In August 2020, the state of California and the U.S. Forest Service signed an agreement to each treat at least half a million acres per year by 2025. That is about doubling what the U.S. Forest Service is doing in recent years and more than a 25 fold increase for CAL FIRE. In this study, we specifically address the state's half of the agreement. Um, so you all know where there's fire, there's smoke. Wildfire smoke impacts on air quality and health has been studied rigorously in the last couple of decades. However, impacts from prescribed fire smoke is not well understood. For these reasons, we're inspired to conduct this study that I'm presenting today. So the fire study covers the entire state of California and includes three research components. First is exposure modeling. Sonoma Technology is leading this part where we try to understand smoke exposure levels in the past and project what the future prescribed fire smoke exposure can be expected with the implementation of scaled up prescribed fire activity. The second is health analysis. California Department of Public Health and US EPA are conducting epidemiological and epidemiological analyses using measured and modeled PM 2.5 data to investigate population health impacts and health burdens from smoke exposures. The third component is community engagements, where California Department of Public Health has conducted listening sessions and surveys in small communities to collect information on public, on public perception of prescribed fire, smoke impacts, and health risks. And this presentation focuses on the exposure modeling methodology part of the study. As I've mentioned, we're looking at exposures in two scenarios, baseline and target. In the baseline scenario, we first developed a fire inventory for smoke modeling based on satellite observations and agency fire records. MODIS instruments on Terra and Aqua satellites provide a very consistent data set from 2003 forward. We also collect agency data from all key sources we identified, including five national and statewide wildfire data sets and three national and statewide prescribed fire data sets. All fire records, uh, satellite and agency records were aggregated to daily level 
and associate it spatial temporally to remove duplicates. We're confident that through this effort, we have developed the best quality and most comprehensive wildfire and prescribed fire history for the state of California from, 2000, from 2003 to 2018. Uh, the 2003 to 2018 acres burned data for California are shown here. Data are broken down by fire type on top. You can see wildfire activity varies greatly year over year and prescribed fire activity is more consistent. The same data are broken down by data source on the bottom. The blue shows matched data between satellite and agency records. Green shows agency data only and red shows satellite data only. A large proportion of the data agreed between data sources, while the unmatched data likely are caused by fire size detection limit of the satellites, fires not recorded in the agency database, or date and location errors in the agency records. Our baseline period is actually the 10-year period between 2008 and 2017, which covers a representative range of fire activities and weather conditions. As can be seen here, fire activities are extremely high in 2008 and 2017, and uh, we also have um, well, well below average years like 2010 and 2011. This is the spatial distribution of daily fire activities for the baseline period from 2008 through 2017. While fires are on the right, um, you can see that most of the state saw wildfires in the 10-year period with hot spots representing major wildfire events. On the right is prescribed fire locations. Activities are concentrated in the Sierra Nevada mountain range, the northern and southern coastal range, and also the Klamath Mountains up north. The baseline fire activity data were then used as input to blue sky smoke modeling framework to estimate fuel loading, fuel consumption, smoke emissions, and plume rise. The high smooth dispersion model is implemented in blue sky and used to disperse PM2.5 smoke with NAM12 meteorology. High smooth outputs were averaged for zero to 500 meter height and sampled on a one kilometer grid using bilinear interpolation to estimate surface PM2.5 concentrations, and then aggregated to daily average for every zip code in California. The cumulative average daily smoke PM2.5 concentrations from high split for wildfires and prescribed fires for the 10-year baseline period are shown here. Uh, first, you can see the contrast in scale where wildfire smoke impacts are 15 to over 20 times greater than prescribed fire smoke impacts depending on location. Wildfire smoke impacts are concentrated in the Klamath Mountains up north, the North Coast Range, the Sacramento Valley, and Southern Sierra Nevada foothills. Prescribed fire smoke impacts on the right are um, concentrated again in the Klamath Mountains the Northern Sierra Nevada and in the Sacramento Valley and in the San Joaquin Valley. So there's some differences in the location of the greatest smoke impacts between historical wildfires and prescribed fires. This is the combined wildfire and prescribed fire cumulative average daily sm smoke PM 2.5 concentrations. Geographic extent, uh, so this is the, the merged data from the previous two maps you saw. Geographic extent of concentrated smoke impacts are dominated by wildfire smoke because the scale of wildfire smoke dwarfs prescribed fire smoke. Wildfire PM 2.5 exceeds prescribed fire PM 2.5 at all zip codes. Um, the boundaries here within the state are the zip code boundaries. And at the most, prescribed fire smoke is about 30% of wildfire smoke at the zip code level. To evaluate model performance, we sampled modeled smoke PM 2.5 concentrations at air quality monitoring locations and compared with the ambient measurements. Comparisons were made with improved site measurements at rural locations 
and with regulatory AQS monitors in populated places. The best correlations were found when compared with improved total carbon measurements. We compared model PM 2.5 to the total carbon at improved sites because total carbon is a strong indicator of biomass burning emission source. We applied several filters using concentration thresholds and intersections with satellite observation of smoke and did not find particular differences in the correlations based on the filters. Correlations are moderate at best when compared with improved total carbon and low to moderate when compared with AQS sites. Also, we saw much stronger agreement between modeled wildfire smoke and measurement data compared to prescribed fire smoke. Shifting focus now to the target prescribed fire scenario, here's how it was developed. We first summarized historical prescribed fire data from the baseline to determine distribution by size and field type. We then randomly assigned fire locations within Cal Fire Priority Landscape Category 4 and 5, which represents areas with greatest wildfire threat to communities. Uh, these hypothetical prescribed fires were then created based on the historical distribution and the random locations until 500,000 acres are achieved per annual cycle. We ended up with eight annual cycles of target prescribed fires to fully treat the 4 million acres of priority landscape class four and five. These fires were then assigned randomly to historical burn days determined by California Air Resources Board for each air basin. The smoke modeling for the target scenario was performed using the same modeling parameters as those used for the baseline scenario. We used 2014 meteorology to disperse smoke for each annual cycle, holding meteorology constant. And we picked 2014 because that year had the median number of burn days among the baseline years and the weather parameters are all within two standard deviations compared to baseline averages. The map on the left is one example, annual cycle of the target prescribed fire scenario. The distribution of hypothetical prescribed fires are similar between modeling cycles, uh, 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 between the eight modeling cycles that I mentioned. Their locations match with CAL FIRE priority landscape for community wildfire threat shown on the right, which is based on fire hazards and housing density data. Here are the aggregated dispersion results for the target prescribed fire scenario. Uh, again, you're looking at cumulative daily average PM 2.5 concentrations. Uh, and you can see the spatial distribution of smoke transport. The projected smoke impacts are seen in the Northern Coast Range, the San Francisco Bay Area, the Sacramento Valley, and San Joaquin Valley, and also in the Sierra Nevada. Smoke impact level is about three times of the baseline prescribed fire smoke impact on average. The small inset map here shows the cumulative results from the baseline scenario that you saw a few slides ago. One major contrast between the target and the baseline prescribed fire scenario is that the target scenario uh, shows that the San Francisco Bay Area will see more smoke transport in the target scenario than the baseline scenario. Uh, it is because during the baseline period, there were not as many prescribed fires that occurred in and, in and around the Bay Area. In summary, we have accomplished a few things so far in this study. We've developed a comprehensive retrospective wildfire and prescribed fire inventory. We've also developed a target prescribed fire scenario where fire activities are concentrated in the CAL FIRE priority landscape high-risk areas. Um, the zip code level daily exposure assignments have been created for both scenarios. The next phase of the study involves diving deeper into the intercomparisons of the baseline and target air quality impacts using the exposure data in health analysis, including understanding the health effects, attributable health burdens, and mortality from smoke exposures. We will also, um, the results from community engagement activities are 
currently under review at California Department of Public Health before public release. So if you're interested in learning more about the FIRE study, do not hesitate to reach out to us. We also look forward to presenting findings from the continued work to help guide prescribed FIRE planning and public health messaging in the near future. Thank you so much for your time and attention. I will talk to you all soon.